Back at the old Mob 455 sh uh, shop, continuing the relocation of the battery to the trunk situation. And now that the battery is located, our next step is to mount the switch. And if you see how this, it's actually a pretty sturdy one. I've seen them where they're a lot cheaper. And this is supposed to be push off so somebody that sees a fire going on they got the guys down by the burnout box at a track they just they don't want to be hunting around for it it's just bang they hit it and it disconnects the power well you can see where there's a lot of movement doesn't take much to disengage it and in order for us to have the push bar that's easy location for somebody to operate we were going to go through a taillight drill a hole through a taillight lens and this disconnects so you wouldn't drive around the street with this thing on at the racetrack you're supposed to have it and in order for this thing to work you can see it, it does more than just a, a 45 or 90 degree movement it's actually taking a, a large sweep, but just to get it to go, you would want this lever to be in this position so that this rod connecting just would be a, you know, bump the rod and it'll move. All right, so we got extra taillight sections on uh, this car. We took the better one for regular driving, and then at the racetrack, then the reverse light would be used for having this rod going through here. So it's really easy to see it's any past tech. But for this to operate at this level, you can see this rod, it's not gonna, you cut it to length. And in order for it to work, it's gotta be in this area. Well, then it's gotta be located so that it's really easy to dump this. You'll see that there's an indexing pin, so we're going to have to drill a hole and get this located 45 degrees more so that we got something to go to weld to. You know, we need to hook onto something. We can't just have this thing floating in the air. <laughs> so uh, that's our next step. We're going to drill a little hole into this bracket and move the switch so that this will be an easy dunk. You'll see how they made this arm and it's a little machined out and this is a Allen wrench and it goes through a little hole so it sits down in here and it stays tight to the shaft. We're taking that off. We'll take this thing, oh gosh, loosen up. There's kind of like a spring washer underneath it so it puts tension on it. And like I said, the way we want it to be for that rod to work, this hole that was there, we're going to move it. See that pin right here? This pin goes in here, and then you know, it goes all the way over to the next one, but we want it halfway, so we're going to have to drill a hole right on that circle. Okay, so now we got to get the drill bit. Is this the one that fits? Okay. This is the location where we want it. And without doing any other welding in here to make things less than stock, we're going to go off of this or drill into here, go off of this, and then there's a stud here. So a three point, you know, adding on to here and getting it right in the middle of there would tighten this thing up where it should be able to just handle that and pull it back and not be going all over the place. So now we got to make patterns. We got a little dorky bandsaw that's straight up and down for cutting out metal. 
I'm going to have to make the pieces that are going to attach from this height down, over, and back. So anytime that you know you got to make something out of metal, it's always cheaper than paper. So you get a piece of, any old piece of paper. And I know I got this stud here. We took a bumper bolt out, pushed it down to here. So this, these are two locations that I can deal with. And you want to have a magic marker that has ink in it. So that's going to be the first piece that I cut out. And because we know this has to go here and be at this height, then we got to make a piece that comes up. What I'm doing right here is you see this stud here and that stud there, they were raised up higher than the level of the trunk floor. So it would be bouncing or whatever. And I'm just going to take the end and roll it over so then it'll lay level. We can always put some of that edging on there if to avoid vibration. So I'm smacking this over. Whoop. see all these bends in here and see this is folded metal that's on top of there so as we tighten this down now it's sturdy made that out of metal and it ties in with these two studs the bumper bracket and that little battery hold down bracket and then we had to figure out the height of where the switch rod would be running decent so then that's going to come off of here, and then we got one more place off the back of the taillights so that this thing should never move. This is our last piece to triangulate it to the taillight hole. And that will make it rigid, you know, from a three point hitch. So now you can see where whenever you get something in three points, it's pretty rigid. And even if the switch, it's not going to be it's not like a connecting rod and a piston going up 9,500 RPM. This gets used once in a blue moon. So it can't go anywhere. It's right here, bumper bolt, and there. And there will be some movement, but we didn't want to make it with quarter inch plate. We're trying to keep this thing as light as possible. So we were trying to remove as much metal as possible. And it's going to do the job. It's traveling up and down. This is a situation where you're not going to be putting a ton of pressure into this. It's plastic and it could fracture. You might see that happen. Then I'll be going, oh shit. <laughs> now that I got a hole going, you know, I wasn't. You didn't see me fall through, you know, you could tell I wasn't putting much pressure in. Now I'm going to use a die grinder to make the size instead of, <laughs> instead of a big giant drill bit. Because the more you use a drill bit and it catches or something, we could always have this thing fractured. So we know we got to be at least this size. And in the throw of this switch, it's doing this kind of deal. And it's going up, and it's going all over. So, 
I'm going to just try the size hole and then we're going to do it, see if it binds up and I might have to make this thing elongated. in the middle and it can't vibrate then it doesn't make as much noise. Let's see how centered you had it. Okay, kill it. Losing's got a graduation on here, and I've got a little quarter 20 stud that's going to go into here after it's tapped and half into the handle. So I'm kind of just doing this an inch on these graduations and split the difference for half into the handle and half into the tap threads that I'm going to be putting in here. I'm going to get something that's a little better to hold the tap with. But very seldom is this car going to be run with that on it anyhow. 